Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, this is the DPA response uh, to the sit wrap of day 50 and 51 summary. Uh, yeah, um, you can f you can actually see, hear my voice is a bit uh, not so good because I just finished a 45 minute uh, DPA response to the 50 day catch up video so if you are you you comment on the 50 day catch up video uh maybe i'll reply to your comment uh in that one so anyway i'm now going to cover the comments here so again let me show you is the top comments so um let's start so eddie a say the s400 can operate uh with a ele elevated mask uh, mast so it's designed to shoot for shooting down low flying and very low flying aircraft it's a myth that low flying aircraft unseen by radar in this current age you need jammers and decoy to make radar job harder you have to know how the radar system were configured to know what can get by them the u.s is probably helping ukraine to make a flight path that avoid radar like they do for their own aircraft um yeah possible very possible very possible so uh the oracle says big congrats dpa uh you got your first ten thousand subs yay and the second ten thousand should come faster keep it up yay yeah i i hope so i hope so and um, though i must say i do empath empathize with and feel for those who perished uh both civilian and very every fallen soldier which is a direct consequence of the wrenched wretched uh decisions made in the white house then of moral depravity uh, my wish is for russia to send them they are deserving hypersonic gifts so they were never there to start orchestrate another war for ten thousand uh, for one thousand years if you if they do that uh, we will immediately go into a world war so no please thank you oracle but no please don't give this gift um mark ezra bulat great intro nice to see your channels improving bit by bit over time oh talking about the intro the this this intro that you see uh this one this actually this intro already exists uh, before the war started I, I just never use it um because i'm lazy yeah so uh, so now i actually just uh need to do this you know i can like Defense start power. at any time yeah so i can do this now so uh i actually also have the ability to do that i just never thought of doing it so yeah that's that so ninja striker kiev attack with two mi8 transport heli has no military and hardly even pr value so it's most likely a diversion good guess since he used transport heli is is that is that it was part of an insertion or an extraction operation likely done with other mi8s and connected to sof port sabotage groups actually i agree that uh this 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 entire airstrike uh makes no sense to me so it's to call it a diversion for something else uh, i think this is a very likely uh scenario very likely so nashut shivas i totally totally agree with carpet bombing uh, ab about the carpet bombing the u.s military used uh b-52 in bombing yugoslavia in the desperate attempt to help terrorists who had unsuccessfully attacked the state border who is terrorist and anyway all those frightening frightening uh after more than 20 years craters are still being seen on satellite images of the terrain the bombs had little effect as the serbian army did a very good job of dispersing and masking the troops much more efficiently than ukrainians and even russians do the a-10 attack planes were more successful and even managed to hit the outpost of the serbian army the dpa rightly said that they are mostly used as weapon of terror since armistice was signed under the threat of the usa that carbon bombs will destroy serbian cities and wheat fields um yeah i i mean this is just my position uh thank you for Na nashut shivas for agreeing with me uh, I, i'm i think not, not sure if you will see uh, other comments saying that it's uh, the opposite to the lama society that commenta so this is bahasa 
uh, I mean Malay or Indonesian. So I need to translate. If not, you guys don't understand. I haven't commented for a long time. But that's exactly what uh, was the the thing that I said. I, I read just now. Uh, regarding Mothcalf, it was an old ship that was upgraded half-heartedly for financial reasons. I am more convinced of where and uh, human error uh, in case of drowning, uh, which is the sinking. Just like our N402, I think this is talking, to, uh, talking about uh, the Indonesian vessel. It's common for goods that was often used, uh, common for vessels that were old, and uh, allied con countries alone can make the engines disappear without a trace. MKM engines. Actually, this translation is quite horrible. I, I dubbed the ability to make missiles and rockets from Ukraine because uh, there's a story of a country we tried rocket nozzles made in Ukraine, uh, destroyed in a test in the buyer uh, country. So the issues of rocket and missiles much more advanced in North Korea than Ukraine. North Korea can make copies of SCUD and sell them to Iran and Iraq, while Ukraine can only upgrade Tushka U warheads only. All I know is that there's an Asian country that's interested in the nonsense of uh, R360 Neptune, but I believe the project will fail because of the same case of the same uh, dread nozzle. When Poland offered bomb making and its factory managed by the Asian state, I wonder who is him talking. Who is he talking about? Uh, initially, there was interest, but ended in gloom because the Asian countries were even more advanced about the bomb, and now the country is turning next to France. I think he's talking about Indonesia. Is it or is it Malaysia? But I actually have no idea who he's talking about. Uh, can I look at the uh, original text? Um, sekarang the server. I don't think he actually uh mentioned about which country he's referring to. He's being very politically correct. So, uh, terima kasih Marusina. Uh, sudah sudah baca uh, tulisan kamu. Uh, uh, I have trouble understanding everything. So, uh, maaf kan saya. So, uh. Chokov, Vochov, sorry, uh, Vochov. On digging and trench warfare, I am surprised uh, that it is a serious problem to be solved nowadays. Um, Airbus artillery, artillery shells, uh, tank shells with timed detonator, the Soviets already had them. Uh, precision area bombs, all these means should be effective against trench and fortification. I'd like to hear your opinion on this. Uh, sign up. On sign up for the fan honest work. Thank you, uh, Vosho. Um, my opinion is that yes, there is all these things, but why haven't the Russians used it? The, that's that's just my uh my opinion. But perhaps they hold they held back all these things so that they can keep them there for a longer time. Uh, that is possible. Then that is really a big brain move by the Russians. Uh, so, uh, the only way to know is do we see a utter collapse of the eastern front uh, suddenly uh, when the russian seems to be ready you no know, mariupol has fallen all the forces have uh, regrouped and they decided to be ready to push uh, from the south because now they're already pushing from the north right from izium so if there is this sudden collapse in the fortification and the entrenchment uh, then then i think you, what you're saying what you said is actually correct uh, my my only war my only concern is that well, why aren't they using it already? Um, so that's mainly my point my my position about this, uh, because the Russians seems to be struggling a lot, uh, but you know that could be all you no know, four D five D six D chest, um, Yek Yek uh has been uh I think making making some fans I think uh in the comments. A lot of people have been referring to his comments. Uh, I think one of the videos I can't remember. Yak say, uh, carpet bombing is super cheap. For a price of a single cruise missile, you can drop a 50 bomb from a big bomber using the fuel for the flight. Uh, it's like artillery versus missile in that way. Uh, one is economical for total war. The other one is only for targets where the bomber cannot reach safely. Yeah, I think that's a good point as well. Uh, so, so... I really have nothing to argue against this. Like, like to be honest, carpet bombing is seriously much, much cheaper. Just like artillery is much, much cheaper than um, rockets. So, and um, so there's that. I have no, I have nothing against that. Um, Deborah and uh, Ponaya, Ponaya, Deborah Ponaya. 
Thank you for your updates. I so enjoy your showing uh, what's going on with the actual map to orient us. I think the Russians are bombing Kiev and other cities to keep the Ukrainians busy while they focus on Donbass region. Dom okay, focus. Bombing the cities to keep them busy while the... Well, okay. Uh, especially Mariupol, from which Russian army evacuated the kids this morning. I I have also nothing... I, I think you are correct. I think... I think they... The, the Russians are not bombing Kiev and uh, other cities like Kharkiv uh, randomly. There is actually legitimate military targets that the Russians are bombing. So, because if the uh, aim is just to kill off the civilians... It's much faster to use a much bigger bomb, like, or use just use nu nuclear weapon. Then they can just wipe out all the cities, and Ukraine will fall within a few days. So, um, so I, the bombing to me is that they are bombing military targets. Uh, and whether that keeps the Ukrainians busy, uh, it really depends on what do you mean by busy, right? So, uh, it's definitely not creating a lot of good wheels in the people who are in involved in the emergency services. Andrew Bausa, you're quite right that the deployment of S-400 is very significant. Previously, the S-400 were kept around Moscow and other military bases around Russia because they are Russia's latest and most advanced missile systems. The Russian military command has decided to bring this system to the Ukraine border means they are significantly upgrading their defense and off offense missile capabilities for the Ukraine front. A little bit late for their battleship Moscow that uh, got sunk. Uh, though even though it was equipped with uh, various uh, S three hundred systems, yeah, I, 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 I actually uh, agree. Uh, so you agree with me? I agree back with you that uh, the S four hundred is actually a uh, something because the Russian Defense Ministry particularly particularly uh, mentioned S four hundred. They they have no need to actually say that they can just say air defense, but they mention S four hundred. It's basically a message uh, telling the Ukrainian side and the world. Uh, maybe to the Americans and NATO as well that we are now escalating you know we are now bringing even more advanced weapon into the war and this is you know this is the what they are trying to send the message which is why it's significant in a political way uh, militarily I'm not so sure uh, because the Ukrainian air force is very depleted uh, while they're uh, despite they're still flying somehow so um, thank you uh, Adrian or, or Andre, I I'm not sure how to pronounce this word. Uh, uh, Andre Balsa, thank you so much. Uh, Vlado Marka, it is nice to see constant improvement of this channel. Maybe one day when DPA will report about Russians' new offensive in Kark Kharkov front, and we will have more than one million subs. We can say yes, we know this guy when he have less than one thousand subs, and his en English was even worse than today. Thank you so much. I I I. I it will be a crazy dream come true if I have one million subs. Like crazy dream, I, I'm I'm now only dreaming about hundred thousand. I'm not dreaming about one million yet. <laughs> uh, regarding Donetsk front, I heard that the Ukrainians have strongly fortified positions which extend about thirty kilometers in depth. Wow, I I did I didn't know the distance in depth. Uh, let's take a look. Um, thirty kilometers in depth is how far? Mm, okay, that's rather far. So 30 kilometers in depth. I think this is plausible. This is plausible. Mm. Uh, and so this is not the first. Oops. What happened? Oops. 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 Okay. Sorry. Accident. Um, so it is not the first front line. Reserve position and secondary reserve positions. But, com but something completely crazy. It is not surprised to see Russia making moves in order to bypass and cut them off. The direct attack would bring terrible losses for the attacking army so it's not the first front line reserve position and then secondary position uh, I, actually i'm not so sure what is this sentence supposed to mean um but yes if they go for a direct attack um it's actually a lot more riskier unless they have some weapons or some method of uh, breaking uh, fortified uh, positions and entrenchment that we do not know of um so I actually do not know how the Russians is going to do it. Um, maybe we'll learn someday. Uh, maybe. But thank you. Thank you so much for being around. You know, like all this while. I'm, I'm very, very grateful and very appreciative about all this. 
uh, all this support you know from you guys that's why i'm doing all this uh, comment update because uh, while it's, it's it became literally impossible to reply one by one so i do like and like and heart the comments when i can and i also try to do this section of dpa response so that you know i at least i try to continue to engage you guys uh am i too loud uh you you do let me know about the audio i i just now was very close to the mic so maybe this volume is better so niger williams niger williams uh by the way in my honest opinion so this actually, by the way, in my own honest opinion, you're doing a great job with these updates. As always, one has to consider many sources to reach a measured conclusion as to what is actually happening. You are a very useful source with your perspective. Thanks. Yes, I, I, this is totally true. And I highly recommend you guys to, you know, get information from more sources and do not, re do not just depend on me because I can be wrong and uh, my information can be wrong as well. So don't trust me hundred percent. Um, even in the normal days when you're reading news uh, from your local news about anything uh, if we can we try to read from different sources and different perspective so that we can get the actual truth because uh, we are only reading or seeing whatever other people want us to see so we must remember that Andrew Areva uh, what can a bomber do that an artillery cannot do uh, a 222 can drop a F FAB 3000M, which is a 3000 kg bomb. Okay, you, you win. But I, I have not, <laughs> nothing against it. Yeah, you're correct. Yeah, that's what artillery cannot do. So, Patrick Cloutier. Cloud, 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 I actually don't know how to pronounce this word. Patrick, Defense Politics Asia has become my go to channel for information about the war in Ukraine. I appreciate your coverage here as it lacks the hyper partisanship. I am observing. On other channels, the narrator appears to strive for a balanced view of events that occur in Ukraine. Thank you so much, Patrick. Um, yes, this is what I'm trying to do. I think, I think if I if you are following uh, the evolution of media nowadays of journalism, um, we have devolved, you know, from a proper journalism to actually clickbait. Basically, all news network becomes a uh, tabloid, and that is the the that's the that's a sad thing about journalism nowadays uh that's why in at dpa what i'm trying to do is that we are we're just going to go back to basics and you know just report uh as and then we when it's an opinion we tell you it's an opinion and uh as much as possible we just tell you the facts and then you make your own decision what is the truth so this is what i hope to do and uh, hopefully i can spend the team some days and to actually you know provide you with more news henry curtis um Helicopter had to go over higher ground on the way back to base. Maybe that's why it flew too high. Um, Russia will wish to retain Kherson in any negotiation. So making a big fuss about the importance of the dam to Crimea is worth emphasizing. Mm. Yeah, I agree. It indicates hopelessness on the part of Ukraine. Uh, the Russians must be deliberating when when to look to take Odessa and link to Transnistria. So this this is Transnistria. I think wrong spelling. Uh, no doubt they have enough targets for now. Not really a stalemate. The the Russians are eroding ru Ukrainian morales and and fight fighting capabilities quickly enough. See Scott Ritter. You know, everyone is telling me to see Scott Ritter. It's so funny. Uh, territorial control will depend on a peace negotiation, uh, which will be taking place with a complete societal societal com collapse within Ukraine. Um, I'm not sure if I ever mentioned on my channel before. But yes, this is exactly my point as well. The what Ukraine is doing is that they are trying to drag it out. But as they drag it out, the uh, it just make it worse and worse for Ukraine in the future. There is not uh because they are they are getting so much weapons, they're getting so much loan, which they have to pay back. And they will have to pay back with an economy that is much smaller than it was before the war because they will be they will they will lose all the all the farmlands the oil and all they all they were left with is uh let me show you all the resource resource rich area is here and here these are the resource rich area which the russians are seemingly intending to capture and if they are only left with this they're going to be so dead man 
after the war, uh, their economy will be will be hopeless. So I'm not sure how uh, how much the Russians want to go for. You Putin have actually warned uh Zelensky that if you're not going to ne negotiate with us, there would and you're going to continue to resist Russia, then uh, there may not be a Ukraine left at the end of the war. So that's that's what uh, he he threatened. So uh, Miss Joanne of the Ark, I love this broadcast. All the detailed info plus the intro rocks. Defense politics ASIA. Yes. Yeah, that's how you read it, you know? There's a dash, right? A S I A. Yeah. Thank you so much, Joanne of the Ark. Um Lawrence Go, evil knows no bounds as usual. Thank for sharing this with the community. Thank you so much, Lawrence. Um Jose Freitas. Actually the heavy bomber can deliver much heavier true bunker buster bombs. So it makes sense to use them. Many of these bombs have final jet acceleration, making them capable of penetrating deeper. Well, I actually do not know about this thing. This technology sounds scary. Um, um the my my question is actually whether they actually want to uh bunker bust the Azov style. Because they are they already accused uh, the Ukrainians have to have bio labs within Azov style. So I believe that they actually want to capture whatever is inside intact. Uh, of course, the Ukrainians will try to destroy whatever they can, but there's only so much they can destroy. So um, let's see. Maybe the Russians will lose lose their patience and just use, uh, use a few Kinzals and just wipe out the place. Uh, Matthew Reynal. So... From the satellite image of the area uh, that are available to the civilians from the time where, before they attacked it, they were attacking a small military motor pool located near the village, maybe 30 or 40 trucks and transport that is parked there beside the village. Uh, actually, I do not know what is this about. Oh, skip. Uh, Kimovo. Okay, I think he's talking about Kimovo, the, the airstrike. The, the helicopter strike by the Ukrainians. So, okay, where is it? Shit. Okay. Um, yeah, so I don't know, maybe it's a company of soldiers left behind to patrol the border or if the Russian troops are regrouping there, waiting for re fewer delivery. I mean, it's just a satellite image, but the trucks are definitely the target. Uh, uh, thank you. I actually never saw this thing, so I have no comments, but thank you for the information. Yeah, I, I'm for, for me, I'm sure that he helicopters are meant to do something. Um, you don't really dis attack uh, and waste your ammunition on civilians really you don't waste your, your ammunition on civilians so it's a waste of your precious ammo so there must be something there that they are striking uh mammoth valley um a bomber can drop bunker buster ammunition which artillery can't and the footage com confirmed it was a drop off bombing but uh, thank you so much i saw the the footage but the footage the the way how the bomb drop is rather random yeah, it, which in a way it looks like a you no know, what you call drop off bombing or just free fall bombs. Uh, but I, I really don't know know enough, uh, because the Russians have been randomly using different kind of missiles and delivery systems, and sometimes it just doesn't make sense to me. You no, know, but anyway, Frank Quinn seems to me there's a lot of Russian movement which is being blocked using EW. EW is what early warning. Electronic warfare. Uh, once they are in position, probably they will knock out the major duck in positions and move simultaneously on multiple fronts. I agree. I think this is something that uh, is very Russian. It seems like a war of attrition on the on the Ukrainian has worked well so far. The war of attrition on the Ukrainians. I, so the war of attrition is launched is actually conducted by who actually. Uh, in this sentence structure is the Russian use it on the Ukrainians yeah apart from the fact uh, that the Russians could have seriously taken out electrical plants electricity electricity plants and other infrastructures but didn't show there's so much more room to move on the Russian side yes this is true I have re I have been reporting about uh, I have been saying the Russians have uh, a lot of initiative on their end and the Ukrainians do not have any initiative on their hands uh, 
the Russians can choose to do anything and the Ukrainians can only react. Uh, this is something that I have been saying. Although uh, I have been a bit critical about the U Russians uh, the past two days or three days because they seem to be really trapped for a bit too long. But uh, today's report, it seems uh, to be much better. They are actually, um, they are actually moving, uh, they are spreading out. Uh, they're spreading out so there's some progress and they actually captured Sudihivka and we actually see some uh, prog advance uh, from this side so it's a massive uh, northern front push so that makes me feel a bit more like oh that's more Russian uh, so let's see whether they actually can push far because the last time they did that they stuck at, they, they, they just stuck at Sudihivka for like one week so thank you so much for your comment uh, I agree with you I agree with you Nigel Williams. This is a second command. Yeah, uh, Nigel Williams again. So the two twenty two M three hit looks like a precision dumb bomb strike. Uh, the detonation pattern shows the aircraft approaching from the east with about eight bombs hitting the factory shed at the northeastern corner of the fight. The flash pattern is not characteristic of a one round fire for effect from a six gun artillery battery or a MBR M MRS, I think. I actually have no comments about this because uh, I, I can only agree with you because I, I, I can't analyze uh, based on detonation patterns. I think, I think Niger, you're correct. James, um, gravity bombs are useful in certain situations. Everybody is just so pissed off with me saying the heavy bombers are useless. <laughs> Such as uh, blasting underground bunkers and reinforced uh, forts. These are missions where pinpoint accuracy with small missile payloads can't do the job. If Ukrainians uh, dug into train tunnels, it may just be easier for the Russians to drop some more apps from then. Uh, the Russians do not have the mother of all bombs, they have the father of all bombs. Yes. Uh, I, I cannot I, I cannot argue, you know, I cannot argue. I, I, it's true. All these are just true. Um, just that I haven't really seen much of Russians using dumb bombs. So, John Lemma, thank you for managing to make these uh, valuable videos even when you're busy. Truly appreciate it. Thank you so much, John. Uh, I appreciate you watching and commenting as well. Corsair, uh, rest well and don't pay attention to the comments that could be hurtful. Yeah, you, you, you can't imagine how much how much hurt I, I actually suffered. I'm so hurted. Uh, you are factual and the pros. Let them think what they want. I actually don't know. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for your work. I'm not surprised you are gaining subscriber. It's the result of quality work. Thank you so much for, for the you know the very kind comment, Corsair. I, I, I'm I'm really really you know I can't emphasize this, emphasize this enough that I'm really really very appreciative of all the support and the gaining of the subscribers and the viewers that keep coming back because, um, I have been you know interested in all these kind of things especially with maps and uh, strategies geopolitics and i feel that i talk a lot of sense but i don't seem to have an audience you know so i really very thankful for gaining all this audience johnnyson 76 i would respectfully disagree with your assessment to the use of bombers it's the bombers again everybody hates me for the bombers if the weapons used were large FAB, the thermobaric bombs or missiles, they can be quite effective against deeper fortifications. Mm. My, my, I, 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 I cannot deny, I cannot like really re deny or reject this. My, my main thing is still about, do the Russians actually want to collapse the entire Azov style? Because they could just drop a tactical nuke. I'm just saying. Uh, okay, some people will just say no, no, uh, because of radiation. So, yeah. Yeah, I have. I, I, I get a hit of myself, so sorry. Uh, Alex Wang, I hope you can clip all the days of maps together so people can see in one video just the days without commentary. The reason is, uh, no, I will not do it because uh, it's a waste of time. Uh, it takes a lot of work to do video editing, which is why, you know, the video editing, you can see here, doo -doo, doo -doo, you see, these are live. Uh, these are not video edited. Uh, because if I do video editing, uh, it will take three times more time and uh and the thing about the maps is that my maps are not 
uh, on the daily basis, there are errors within the maps. And, and so as day passes, I actually correct the borders. So, so the day one border is actually a bit too much on the Luhan side and, the uh, and some of, some of the ages of the Donate side. So I, I don't think it's very useful unless I have to correct all the maps and, uh, that will just be a waste of time like like seriously a waste of time for me i think there are other mappers that have uh, better maps in in that kind of uh, formatting where they can do the animation of all the how the border have changed i think some of the mappers are doing that and i don't think i want to you know eat into their rice bowl or you no know, contradict what they are doing i think i do what i I do better will be actually covering news and giving my perspective on what could be the truth. I think that's better for me to actually focus on what I can do better. But thank you, Alex Wong, for this comment. I'm just sorry. I just, no, I just, I just don't want to do video editing. Okay. Gregory Jones, um, they also stated they have cleared the port area of Mariupol. Yes, they have cleared the port area for at least almost coming to a week already. So, in my maps, they are they no longer uh the Ukrainians no longer have the port actually. Uh, what, how long are we are now thirty minutes fifty five already. So, uh, let's cover the last three comments. Uh, since they are short, so, uh, A and M games bomber can recon and fire at the same time. So fast response, and it can be long in the air. So long threat to enemy. This is correct for actually uh the drones. This is not correct for bombers. The bombers can't really stay in the air for very long in enemy territory. Uh, they can they can be shot down. They can stay in the air within their own territory, but it's actually for missile strikes. Like you know, deterrence. You know, let's say in a very high high tension situation, the strategic bombers will be flying around, both on the Ukrainian side and the American side. Uh, all these strategic bombers will be they'll be flying around. They'll be flying for ten hours, twelve hours shifts and their job is to fire nuclear missiles the in terms of tactical warfare they uh we you don't use bomber in this way uh you will use this for drones uh and then you might use them like maybe the you know the ac-130u gunship uh, maybe they will do that so i don't think bombers actually you know operates in this way but thank you for your comment you know uh and uh obese tuna tuna you're just, your name is so gonna get me struck by the youtube <laughs> the, um, the most interesting summary thank you this entire debacle has become a monumental embarrassment to the russians what what did i say that that caused you to think this way uh okay thank you so much for for your comment tuna um costa bendil thanks Keep up and the map explanation is perfect and interesting. Thank you so much for your appreciation. And uh, so I, I can cover a few more since they are, these are our short, one, short ones. Dibra, uh, Ligoreta, what percentage of Ukrainian forces are NATO? And what and what's the percentage of the commandos are NATO? And uh, what is the percentage of Ukrainian military leadership is NATO? So I actually made a comment, I said, as far as I know, none. Yeah. As far as I know, none of them is NATO US. Uh, in terms of mili military consultants and maybe some limited leaderships, they are they could be you no know, NATO or US, but you know it's not it's not verifiable. So I so this is so yeah the the answer for now is none. And uh, Strozzi scroll one, Strozzi scroll one. They likely had some intelligence on Klimovo. Dub such a risky raid is done on the whip. I, I totally agree. They could have easily been shot down, which they did. One of them got shot down. So I have really no idea why they do it. Uh, it's really, really suspicious. Really, really suspicious. So uh, Amadio Komnenos, thank you for keep, keeping us appraised. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. And uh, maybe I drop, I take one more. I don't think I will repeat this one. Uh, so this, because this is also talking about the bunker. So Michigan Muff, thank you so much for the comment. And uh, Rebel Ronin, this will be the last one I will cover. Uh, and thank you, Tuakana, Tuakana. No, thank you so much. Um, uh, Rebel Ronin, question. What is the feasibility and possibility of flooding the underground network or 
exhaustile with seawater. The feasibility is is very doable. Um, the possibility of them flooding it is zero now, because uh the the I think it's I think it's the churchens. The churchens have already released videos of them uh, clearing the rooms one by one with uh flame throwers. And the flame thrower is not the World War Two flame flamethrowers that they shoot oil. Uh, the flame thrower is actually it looks like a bazooka, so it fires a rocket uh, that explode with high intensity flame and explosion. So that's what they are using now to clear the underground uh, chambers one by one. So hopefully that answers your question. And so thank you everyone uh, for staying with me for the past 35 minutes uh i overshot another five minutes again so thank you so much for watching uh this uh, day 50 51 summary uh dpa response to the comments uh thank you for all the kind comments and i'm so sorry about the bombers i will repent okay i will repent i will i, I will have i will i will treat the bombers to to some beer it's okay so sorry stop telling me the bombers are useful i know they are useful okay Thank you so much for watching and uh, please press, press the like button. Please don't press the dislike button. I know some of you hates me and press the dislike button. Uh, if you hate me, then you press the dislike button. Then um, I mean, there's nothing I can do about it. Please press the like button uh, so that more new viewers will find me. And um, and uh, and share, of course, share t to your friends that I think they will interest be interested but I think uh, in terms of response to comment I don't think it's very useful to people la. it's basically more like for you guys to to know to, to engage you the my viewers so anyway thank you for watching and I will see you in the next update